Good evening. Welcome back to Hellhound's Late Night Spook Show here on the Horror and Metal channel, dedicated to the memory of my late friend Spellbinder, who basically started this channel with me. Rest in peace, brother. Um, so yeah, I finally finished uh, my five uh, Batman collection videos, and uh, filming those videos and all the effort I put into them and gathering everything together was uh, very... Uh, daunting task. It was a huge chore, especially editing them, which uh, I had a lot of problems with the part four. But anyway, um, so uh, I'm going to take a break um, before I get to my Superman collection videos. So let's talk about some horror, 80s horror, and, which is my favorite uh, type of horror, which I'm uh, very well versed in. And uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, this is going to be actually a tag video. This is a tag started by Full Moon 1973. He tagged a few people. Um, one of them being Sean Urshan, so, uh, check out Full Moon 1973's channel, check out his original video, check out Sean Urshan's video, um, we're gonna get to mine now, um, but the tag was actually that your top five favorite, um, horror movies from the year 1980, not the decade, the 1980s, the actual year 1980, um, but I'm gonna extend it and come with, uh, a part, um, a ten, a ten favorites, um, I'm gonna pick ten of my favorites from 1980, because it's hard to narrow it down to five, and I actually came with eleven, so, um, one of them is just gonna be an honorable mention, and that's gonna be Nightmare City, um, one of my favorite, uh, Alberto Lindsay, uh, Italian horror flicks, uh, kind of a stupid ending, but yeah, it's a pretty fun movie, I first rented this on VHS back in the day when it was under the title City of the Walking Dead, um, it was one of the first Italian horror movies I ever saw, I believe, um, Actually, no, Black Sabbath was, directed by Mario Bava with Boris Karloff from 1963. That was the first Italian horror movie I saw. This was probably the second, quite possibly. And, uh, yeah, fun movies. That's my only honorable mention. Um, my actual number 10 is gonna be, uh, Dario Gento's Inferno, another great, great Italian horror flick. Um, but I don't own it anymore. I used to have the DVD just by itself with no case. It was just a disc, and I don't know what happened to it. I think it got lost in, like, during a move or something, because I kept all my discs without a case in a different place than my actual library, so I don't have any more, but I highly recommend, uh, the 1980 horror flick Inferno, directed by the legendary Dario Argento. Um, so number nine is gonna be Motel Hell. Uh, that's a very fun movie, um, yeah, Farmer Vincent, played by Rory Calhoun, and, um, his, uh, portly sister Ida, <laughs> um, who was the, uh, the same actress as the gym teacher in Porky's. Uh, very fun movie. I really like the, um, it's, it's very, very, uh, it has a very 70s feel. It's 1980, so I'm sure it's filmed in 79, uh, mostly. So, um, so yeah, it's kind of sleazy, but it's kind of like a horror comedy. It's very, uh, funny and just very, uh, entertaining and enjoyable. I really like the, uh, chainsaw duel at the end that's right up there with the one in, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Um, yeah, um, Farmer Vincent wearing a pig, uh, head on his, on his, on his, uh, over his face. And, uh, had a chainsaw duel with his brother, who's a cop. Uh, yeah, very fun movie. I haven't reviewed this before, um, so I uh, check out my review for more info. Um, yeah, I recommend it. Motel Hell, pretty fun movie. One of my favorites from, uh, the year 1980. Um, next we have Prom Night. Um, one of my favorite slasher movies. Um, it is very basic and kind of by the numbers and generic, and the, uh, killer who wears that, uh, black ski mask, it does kind of get, uh, is kind of, um, clumsy and kind of gets his ass handed to him throughout the movie, but it's a pretty cool, interesting storyline with some interesting characters and, like, most importantly, an interesting backstory that I think had to have uh, inspired. I know you did last summer, uh, quite possibly, uh, or at least the book that um, it was based on. Um, yeah, I've had this on so many formats. I had it on VHS. I've had it on two D different DVDs and now Blu-ray. Um, yeah, pretty fun uh, early 80s slasher fic. And, of course, um, of course, that's Jamie Lee Curtis, who went on to become a huge star. This was, uh, I believe, the first horror movie she was in since Halloween, if I'm not mistaken. It, might, it was either this or the next one I'm going to look at. Uh, but yeah, Prom Night, pretty cool movie. Uh, I reviewed that as well, so for my full thoughts, see my review. Um, speaking of Jamie Lee Curtis and 1980 slasher movies, there's also Terror Train, my number eight. Um, it was a pretty fun movie. Um, it was, uh, I, I like the whole, like, bullied uh, teen um, comes back for revenge against his uh, tormentors. Um, that's a pretty cool uh, storyline. I like the setting on the train aboard um, during New Year's Eve. Um... It was really obvious who the killer was going to be. Like, we all, we all knew it was going to be the bullied team coming back um, to get uh, even with uh, his bullies. But uh, there was a character that he was uh, disguised as. So I knew it was going to be them, uh, that that person that was going to turn out to be him in disguise. Uh, David Copperfield is in it, the magician. Like, I think before he was really, really famous, um, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, 
yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis is in it. She's great. Um, yeah, great cast. Uh, what I really like is how the killer um, wears different costumes throughout the movie. He usually wears that Groucho Marx uh, mask. <laughs> and also just as a lizard. Just various costumes. It's like a costume party, like aboard the train. Uh, they, yeah, cool setting. Pretty cool kills. Um, kind of underrated. Kind of overlooked. You don't hear about this one talked about quite as much as the others. I think Prom Night uh, is talked about a lot more than Terror Train. But I actually prefer Terror Train slightly. Um, yeah, really cool movie. Really fun. Uh, 1980 slasher flick um so next we have another uh, italian horror film one of my favorites from lucio fulci another uh, italian another um italian horror master um city of the living dead great movie um yeah the ending is kind of stupid only because uh they ran out of uh the original footage got destroyed or lost or something so they had to kind of um poorly edit together a new ending and like it's just kind of like the kids walking towards them they scream and the screen turns black it's kind of like they just had to uh hurry up and finish it because the intended uh ending got ruined so uh but other than that yeah very good movie very creepy very disturbing very gruesome um yeah all kinds of really gross uh really grotesque scenes um and i just love it i absolutely love it it has that early 80s really surreal nightmarish feel and, uh, yeah, it's just great. I totally recommend it. Uh, I don't think I've given this an individual re review on this channel yet, but, um, but I will eventually, so stay tuned for that for my full thoughts. But if I have, <laughs> check it out, look it up. Maybe I have, and I just forgot about it. But, um, but I definitely should, regardless. Yeah, See the Living Dead, one of Lucio Fulci's best. It's very great. All right, so now we're down to the top five. Number five is going to be The Changeling, a very suspenseful, very atmospheric, very creepy, uh, horror film and I absolutely love it. George C. Scott's one of my favorite actors. He was of course great in Exorcist 3 and the, the 1984 Christmas Carol adaption. Um, he's always really good. I like him that more that movie Hardcore which is a very sleazy uh, gritty movie. Uh, it's not a horror movie. It's a great movie. I haven't seen it in years. Um, but yeah he's great in The Changeling too. It has a really complex really creepy uh, storyline involving uh, like witchcraft and ghostly spirits and you know, seances and just like you know dark magic. Um, grave uh robbery just all kinds of things that i absolutely love it's all here in this movie um it's kind of hard to explain the plot without uh spending way too much time on it but i just love the really haunted um ghastly uh atmosphere that's the best part um you know the whole uh uh vengeful uh spirits thing i always like that type of thing so uh and yeah like i said george c scott's a great actor and plays a great character so yeah definitely check out the changeling one of my other favorite uh horror films from 1980 all right, so now we have uh, my number four choice is The Fog. Um, speaking of movies of great atmosphere and scenery, um, like I always said, my, as much as I love gore, um, my actual favorite type of horror movie is one that has, like, really moody, really eerie, ominous uh, scenery and, like, great suspense. And, like, as far as atmosphere goes, this has to be the best. Um, this is one of my other favorite John Carpenter movies right up there with Halloween and The Thing and uh, Escape from New York and They Live. Um, Prince of Darkness, um, this is a great, great movie, I absolutely love it, um, I've always been a huge fan of Tom Atkins, um, he's usually a total badass, here he kind of plays it a little more subtle, which is fine, it works for this type of movie, um, yeah, awesome cast, awesome story, yeah, Adrian Barbeau, Jamie Lee Curtis, um, this is definitely one of Carpenter's best, like I said, um, and I love the setting, the sleepy seaside village of Antonio Bay, like, all the gloomy, um, uh, grim, dark atmosphere like i said and just the, the ghostly pirates terrorizing people just a lot of my favorite type of type of things from this movie awesome scenery awesome uh feeling setting it's all great i can't recommend it enough um i actually i have this on laser disc still as well um and i'm glad to finally have it on blu-ray also uh yeah there's the original vhs cover um yeah very great movie comes highly recommended the fog I believe I re reviewed this on my channel as well, so check it out for more info. Alright, number three is going to have to be Maniac, one of the best um, slasher movies ever. I think this is the best 80s slasher movie that isn't part of a big series. It never got a sequel, unfortunately. They were supposed to make one, um, but unfortunately, um, Joe Smanell passed away before they could uh, finish production. Um, yeah, William Lustig's a great director, and this is, I think this is his masterpiece, I think this is his best movie by far. Joe Spinell is perfect as the sleazy, um, uh, murderer who, um, who's a terrible person. Like, he's a more realistic killer. He's not Jason, he's not Freddy, he's a real, actual killer. And it's a very disturbing, very shocking movie. Um, aside from Joe Spinell, some of the acting is a little, um, little hokey and kind of, uh, wooden, but, uh, 
Judith Pinnell really sells it, and, like, I'm kind of, and, like, the fact that it has a really, um, typical, mo shocking, like, uh, movie ending, like, um, it's kind of the only part that doesn't feel totally real to me. Um, yeah, very great sleazy, uh, setting the streets in New York with, like, all the, like, all the, just all the prostitutes and the drug dealers, just that, that seedy, nasty, uh, early 80s New York City setting that a lot of these, um, uh, early 80s movies had with, uh, in the big city. Um, yeah, it's just absolutely great. Carolyn Monroe, who, who's been plenty of horror movies, is also in it, um, and she's, uh, obviously the best, uh, performer next to, uh, Joe Spinell. Um, great movie. I reviewed this as well, so check out my, uh, review for my full thoughts, and, uh, but if you haven't seen it, do yourself a favor, check it out right away. It's great. Um, so number two's gotta be the original Friday the 13th from 1980, the one that started it all. My favorite horror franchise of all time, and one of the best, still one of the best slasher movies. Um, yeah, this is the scariest and most suspenseful um, of the entire Friday the 13th series. It's not my personal favorite, but I do think in a lot of ways it is technically the best. Um... Because it it's a mystery. It's a whodunit. You know, we don't know who the killer is until the end. Now, by now, everybody knows it's uh, Pamela Voorhees, played by Betsy Palmer, who's Jason's mother. But this is where the saga of the, the whole Voorhees saga started. Of course, it's really interesting to compare it to the later entries and just see where it all began. The genesis of the, uh, the Jason Voorhees story. Um, and uh, for the first film, it, it doesn't feel too um, prototypical. Um, it actually has some of the best kills of the whole series. Um... Of course, the, the axe in the face, the arrow through the neck, the slit throat, of course, the beheading at the end. Um, yeah, pretty brutal kills for, uh, for 1980, and uh, very good, very great scenery, the camp setting, Camp Crystal Lake. Um, I love uh, horror films that have a, the, the forest setting, and this is one of the best, this is probably the best uh, summer camp, uh, 80s summer camp slasher by far. There's a lot of imitators, but this is still the best one. Um, this and, and the best uh, Friday the 13th sequels, I might add. Um, yeah, it's directed by Sean S. Cunningham. The soundtrack is great. The score, um, it's just awesome. Uh, but I reviewed this before on my channel, obviously, and I've talked about it ad nauseum, so I'll just, uh, wrap up by saying it's a masterpiece. And, uh, so my number one favorite 1980 horror film has to be, uh, Stanley Kubrick's adaption of Stephen King's The Shining. It definitely differs very significantly from the novel. It takes a lot of liberties, um, it's not really a faithful adaption, but it's awesome. Speaking of uh, atmosphere and suspense, this one is the best when it comes to that, in my opinion. Um, most people love, like, I love vampires and zombies and aliens, and, like, I know a lot of people who their favorite is zombies and, and, and vampires, but my favorite is always ghosts. Like, a good, creepy ghost story is my all-time favorite thing in the world. I love haunted houses, I love graveyards, um, I love eerie moods, and uh, this film excels at all that, that type of feel. Um, yeah, the ghosts are great, yeah, the, the bathtub lady, and then of course, uh, Delbert Grady, um, yeah, the skeletons in the lobby, covered in cobwebs, it's all awesome, Jack Nicholson is of course great as Jack Torrance, very different from the, uh, the, his novel counterpart, but, um, this action, like I said, takes a lot of liberties, but it's still great, Jack Nicholson's a great actor, and I like his Jack Torrance, uh, Danny Louis is very believable as, uh, as Danny Torrance, his son, um, Shelley Duvall is good, um, too, but she kind of, she's kind of just, like, scared and traumatized throughout the movie, but she does fight back a little bit, she does help Danny get away safely when, um, the evil of the Overlook Hotel possesses, uh, Jack Torrance, and he decides to, um, go after his family with an axe, yeah, awesome scenes, awesome, awesome, uh, suspense, great scenery, I love the, the winter setting at the Overlook, the secluded, isolated atmosphere, the, the grim hopelessness, this is a very joyless movie, it's very bleak, and just, um, and just very, uh, kind of tragic and, like, kind of depressing, but in a good way, all the right ways, and, like, I love the ghosts, I love the hotel, um, like I said, it's very different from Stephen King's novel, but it's a masterpiece of its own right. It's my favorite 1980 horror film by far. It's one of my favorite horror movies in general, The Shining. It's an absolute masterpiece, and it's by far my favorite Stanley Kubrick film, which is saying a lot, because he's a, he was a legendary director, just perfect in every way. Um, and Scatman Crothers is great as uh, Dick Halloran as well. Everything about this movie is awesome. I have nothing bad to say about it. It's a solid 10 out of 10 masterpiece. All right, guys, um... Well, thank you for watching my top 10 horror films from 1980. Leave your choices in the comments below. Feel free to make your own video. Like I said, check out Full Moon 1973's uh, original video. And um, I believe him and Sean Urshan also did a uh, top 5 or top 10 uh, 1981 horror films as well. So I'll probably do that uh, eventually as well. Uh, I might get to it later today. I'll probably do it before I get to my Superman collection videos.
um, which shouldn't be as uh, <laughs> taking take as much of a toll as my Batman videos because I'm not I don't like I'm not as well versed in uh, the Superman story arcs as I am with Batman, so it probably won't take as much. But I'll get to it eventually, and um, like I said, uh, stay tuned for that, and stay tuned for my uh, top ten 1981 horror films. Uh, all great movies. If you haven't seen any of these, do yourself a favor and check them out. And like I said, leave your favorites in the comments below. Alright guys, I'm Hellhound. Thank you for watching my late night spook show here on the Horror and Metal channel. Dedicated to the late Spellbinder. Alright guys, later.